an IT consultant with technology in mind. Or no, that sounds corny. What is the value of events? I come here for a variety of reasons. I'm helping new clients introduce uh, introduce them to high tech, meet people in, in person. So many people are so afraid of problems. This is what you do. You help lean into problems and figure out solutions, which I think is super, super cool. High tech is the ability for these maybe smaller, not so well known people to have a chance and get their get their product out there. Yeah, how do you navigate the space with a hotel and like, what's your process? Don't want to give away my secret sauce. <laughs> I have to have the help of operations, revenue, and accounting. If you do not have those three people together, you're going to be working in a silo. It's not going to be successful. I say IT is here to support, not to select. A lot of them are starting to talk about AI and machine learning, but how do you approach that? Well, we already know that we're using it in some form or fashion. It's just recognizing, is it front office, is it back office? Well, it's both. I think some people get worried with AI because they think it's going to take over their job. And that's not the way to look at it. You know, I think it's important to highlight, you know, none of us are human haters, right? But humans, by nature, we are flawed human condition, right? So understanding that humans do cause errors, but also tech can cause errors, right? All right, y'all, how are we doing? We are back for another episode of Hospitable here. Uh, we're actually on site in Charlotte today with Jennifer Jones and our founder, Case Zora. I know it's Zorha. Zorha, but good try. On it. Okay. Uh, getting better. Getting better. <laughs> we are out here for high tech this week. We're super excited. Jennifer, we've been kind of like circling each other for a while. We've been working together and finally get a chance to meet in real life after what, almost a year now? Yeah. So Jennifer Jones is an IT consultant. She helps hoteliers do a lot of different things, but really as it comes to implementing new technology uh, around accounting, around POS, PMS, uh, she's your go to. She helps um, amazing hotel brands. Uh, go to market with this stuff and really figure out how to best set up a hotel for success. So that's what we're going to kind of jump into today. But as for first, so what I like to always bring up, like we're at high tech, super cool event. Uh, what is the value of events? Why, why are you here? Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you guys in person. Um, so high tech every year is an opportunity for me to um, nurture relationships um, with partners, vendors, um, you know, I come here for a variety of reasons. I'm um, helping new clients introduce uh, introduce them to high tech, meet people in, in person. Um, I come with a bag of problems maybe that are better solved, talking one-to-one -one with people. Yeah. Um, the value I bring to my clients is uh, the relationships I have with partners. So if we need uh, to escalate things, if if we need to maybe get something enhanced, um, I have those relationships and I've met those people in, in person. Um, you know, in addition, it's always great to see um, the old faces. I've, I've known people for decades um, coming back here, people I've maybe worked for, maybe uh, worked with. So um, then, then, then on top, the educational sessions, um, there were some great AI sessions this morning that I attended, mm -hmm. um, new ideas. So yeah, I mean, this is, I don't know what number high tech this is for me, but it's over number 10. That's amazing. And you know, for, for me, it's number two. I was in high tech last year in Montreal and I, you know, everyone's like, oh, be prepared. It's a bit smaller. It's a bit more intimate, but it was one of the, I think the best that I had in a long time because we were able to have so many great meetings and really dig in one to one. And I, I love how you brought up like those one to one relationships escalations. I mean, how we met was through an escalation on a on a on an issue. And that actually kickstarted us all three of us getting on a call. I remember because I took it from the courthouse when I was doing jury I know. duty. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, and I you know that the beautiful thing is that through that problem that was escalated, we came up with a really good solution, but it also opened up a whole new line for us to communicate and do more stuff together, which I think so many people are so afraid of problems that they shy away from it where I think we love to lean into it. And you, you brought that up, like, this is what you do. You help lean into problems and figure out solutions, which I think is super, super cool. You yeah. know, one other thing at high tech that I didn't mention before is the E20X competition. So it's a area at high tech where mm -hmm. there are newcomers into the industry who want to pitch. Okay. And um, so it's an opportunity for new, new partners in our space also as well. Um, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. 
Um, and high tech is the ability for these maybe smaller, not so well known people to have a chance and and get their get their product out there. Yeah, I think it's really cool that the program is pretty intense. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's almost overwhelming how much is going on. So for being over number 10 at high techs, how do you kind of navigate your three days here at this type of event? Like what's what's the Must game plan? Be very busy. Yeah, I mean, you start getting all the emails probably a month ahead of time, yeah. um, not to mention the the oodles of party invites, which, mm -hmm. of course, adds to the fun and excitement of high tech. Um you know, it, it's it's a lengthy schedule and a lot of coordination because even though it's only three days, um, you know, there's a lot of people you want to schedule time with. And then you want to shop. You want to go yeah, and see what's, wanna, what see what new is out there. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and not to mention, you know, how fun it is in the in the middle of the exhibit hall to get pulled aside to see old old faces and catch up that way. So the three days, it's not enough time. But I feel like I always need a vacation after high tech to uh, rehab. Yeah. It's also always very funny that the unintentional conversations actually bring a lot, a lot of energy. And like, hey, okay, cool. Didn't set up the meeting, but those stuff that actually happens by accident. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily go searching for new business, but um, it's it's a wonderful opportunity for to have these side conversations yeah. and then somebody remembers you months down the road and um it turns into a, a partnership and a relationship yeah. yeah i think that's the thing that well, i'll say case has been on the road a lot this year at a lot of events um <laughs> i mean heck you've been home what four days in the last three weeks this month i'm gonna be home for like seven days in total, total. yeah yeah but but one of the things that you have been mastering and, and you kind of just brought up is it is all those side conversations and it, it's the it's the face to face. It's the fact that like we're not behind a computer screen or an email. Yes. And when you finally put a face to a name and you're kind of circling, kind of like when it came to all, all three of us, I think that's where like the magic happens in in a way that you just can't predict. But that's why you have to be at these events. And that's also what you guys were just uh, having uh, the conversation about is like, the uh, by the way, uh, what we spoke about, about a mapping issue or whatever. We can think that we've got the most amazing mapping tooling out there, but if it's not working for a hotel, yay, it just isn't working. And then having those side convos, it's like, cool tooling, guys, but you might want to take a look at uh, this part. Yeah, you know, one of the other things I think about um, uh, keeping track of leading up to high tech is you, we're all super busy. And and I'm super fortunate to have built the relationships I have. And mm -hmm. I don't want to bug everybody during the year on maybe little pesky things. But as I'm doing projects over and over again, I'm thinking of ways that we could improve the process, yeah. make it better, make it bulletproof. And I kind of tuck those things aside and I wait until I come to high tech. And that's when I can see an, uh, an executive or someone who I, I really wouldn't want to bother during the year with, but being like, I have a really great idea. I think this will improve the process. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's go grab a drink. Let's go have a coffee and let's talk about it. And that's, that's really important. Yeah, that's what I meant with the side convos. Those are the, the amazing takeaways that you're like, Hmm, cool. This is, this is good. Solid feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when you're at an event like this and you're with, with all the conversations, the, the floor, the side events, like the innovation that's in your brain is always happening because you're hearing so much of these things where those conversations become more natural versus like, hey, I have this great idea or I have this thing I want to talk to you about when you're in the flow of your business, where here it's like your brain's already kind of thinking about, okay, where is improvements happening? What is innovations happening? Oh, I heard this group talking about this. How do we incorporate something like that? And we'll get into a little bit like AI which is obviously a super hot topic in hospitality for everybody. For everybody right now, it's it's absolutely crazy. Uh, but I want to kind of jump into you know the hotel side of things. When when you're working with hotels to implement, like what is the process for a hotel out there? Because as you know, the space has changed a lot this year. I think everyone knows is a, is a year of change. Some big chains are switching PMSs. Uh, new PMS players are really stepping into upstream type of markets. So you're starting to see a lot of new technology, mergers, integrations happening. So how do you navigate? Yeah, how do you navigate the space with a hotel, and like, what's your process with them when you get started? Yeah, don't want to give away my secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, but um, it's a great question. Um, I'm agnostic of platform, and so when I meet with a with a new client, um, it's important for me to tell them that because 
I want to get to know them mm-hmm. and so I can learn their, their pain points and help them, um, lead them to the right decision to find the right solution or solutions. Um, you know, one of the rules I always go by is I've got to have the three pillars to success for me are, I have to have the help of, um, operations, revenue, and accounting or finance. If you do not have those three people together when you're implementing a system, um, you're going to be working in a silo. It's not going to be successful or you're, you're going to go down and build something only to have to re-widget it at a later time. So um, I, even though I kind of represent the IT side, I say IT is here to support, not to select. Um, I, I need the business owners, um, ops, rev, and finance to be um, having a voice in whatever decision is for whatever given tool, but then they need to be a part of the configuration process. And so they all have a vested interest on how it was built, why it was built this way. Um, so that to me is lays the foundation of um, any successful implementation. Yeah, then all stakeholders involved are actually quite well aware on what to expect and where to apply. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I go through a really um, intense requirements gathering process. No matter again what system it is or systems. Um, whether it can be integration requirements, if they mm-hmm. already have a current tech stack that they're going to be fitting this system into, um, other requirements for functionality, other requirements that IT might have from a compliance yeah. um, perspective. But all of those things need to be gathered. How do we gather them? I'll do a discovery session where um, I'll sit and interview different users from different departments. Um, and then, you know, draw up a scorecard, like help help people identify and document, you know, what they stated previously and why we, why we selected this system. Cause it always happens after people come and go, why did we choose this system? Yeah, whoa, why? You know, yeah. And so we document it and we keep a library of those requirements and we use it as we go down the path of vetting out vendors and mm-hmm. scoring them and, um, so then everybody collectively can have a, have a voice in, um, the selection process. And how do you guys scope mutually with, uh, with hoteliers and departments about connectivity issues, for instance, how, how important is that? Uh, it's probably one of the top three. I mean, if, if it's integration related, mm-hmm. um, you know, we, we will judge those things as, um, high priority maybe nice to have versus need to have. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we'll put some kind of like quantitative maybe measurement against it um, based on, well, this integration isn't super important, but we could always get another system for that. Um, because sometimes when you choose something, things around the ecosystem have It'll to change, change as well. Yeah. There can be a domino effect. Um, you've got to vet out costs, you know, it still amazes me how some vendors will charge X Mm -hmm. for an integration where it might be an API and it's super Mm self-service. So there's really not a large level of effort around clicking it in per se, but, um, you know, that's cost of course is a factor in the whole analysis in addition to, um, scoring those, um, pieces of functionality. Yeah, yeah, correct. And also, yeah, sorry, uh, Rob, you're the podcast host, but it's quite interesting. If you think about the connectivity issues and what Rob was alluding, uh, alluding to earlier, like ML, AI, how, how do you approach a process where hoteliers start talking? I can imagine that a lot of them are starting to talk about AI and machine learning, but how, how do you approach that? Yeah, um, you know, it's still new. Yeah. Uh, there were two great sessions this morning here about AI. Um, you know, one of the things I picked up, um, from the session, well, we already know that we're using it in some Mm -hmm. form or fashion. It's just recognizing, um, you know, is it front office? Is it back office? Well, it's both. I'm more intrigued on the back office side, Mm -hmm. the AI use to help support our employees and our processes behind the scenes. Of course, there's AI technology that impacts the guest. Um, you know, Considering that I that you're an accounting 
type tool, right? Um, you know, I, we're a bit more. I know. So thank you for asking <laughs> us a question. Like I, I need to Let's understand what more. you guys are doing. But yeah, yeah, true. But um, you know, I think that um, accounting departments and hotels struggle. Mm -hmm. They're always cleaning up the mess yep. of all of the transactions that are done by our front office staff restaurant, you know, all the cashiers, the people who are in our cashier or cash registers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I feel like it'll be interesting to see how AI can impact the, um, like the workflows of like the reconciliation process yes. or identifying errors before day rolls that you're smirking. I can't wait to talk <laughs> about this more. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're, you're kind of highlighting a lot of the things that we are kind of working on behind the scenes as well, but also the things that we talk to our clients and partners about all the time. And I, I think you kind of highlight this interesting thing about AI on the back office, but not just cleaning up the mess, but also prepping for the mess when you think of staff planning and revenue management and things the like. Where is it best effectively used in different parts of the process so that by the time it gets to accounting, that is a smoother process? I think everyone's thinking, oh, we're just going to put it here. But you're just highlighting there's so much that leads up to here yeah. that needs to have. That was also the reason as why, right? Because if you don't have a data, uh, proper data approach, you can talk all about ML and AI that you like, but it's never going to work. Yeah. I mean, we have some old fashioned um, ways to catch bad data mapping. Mm -hmm. We all know what they are and, and they work. But it it requires the the manual effort yeah. of somebody searching for that that fix me code yeah. or that bad data. Um, or the full backlash here, like what's happening here, guys? Yeah, yeah. and and the the sad part about it is, even though we have those old fashioned catch all um, tools, notably, it's not caught until after day end, Correct. right? So we're adjusting past financials. Um, you know, I'm just, I think in the last year or two, I have this huge effort where, you know, I, I really embrace the accounting people in a hotel mm -hmm. because I've now so seen <laughs> the messes that they are left. Yep. And, you know, I don't know if we're ever going to fix it on the frontline staff. You know, I mean, it's we're, also difficult. Yeah. It is difficult. We want them to serve the guest. We want that guest experience first and foremost. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see how AI can help that gap between, um, you know, a clean transaction and, and, and helping our staff who make, may make mistakes, fix it before it gets to accounting. Yeah. Yeah. True. I love that. Cause when you think about the cus getting into the customer experience, the customer experience I think is super, super important at hotels and, you know, there are some hotels that are going fully, you know, tech focus where, you know, for the kind of digital natives to, to walk in and have a different experience. But most traditional hospitality used to want that guest experience. And it's really easy to say, oh, we're going to build a tool to make a better guest experience. But what does that actually mean? What are the interactions that the guest needs to have to have a proper experience? And then are the staff, especially frontline staff, equipped to handle those things? Do they have the tools to mitigate risk in terms of guest experience. I think we don't always think that through sometimes. And that's sometimes a, a, a challenge on implementing tech is where does that tech help and what does it hinder yeah, at times? I um I think some people get worried with AI because they think it's going to um take over their job. Uh -huh. Right. And that's and that's not the way to look at it. Um I feel that uh, a colleague of mine who spoke this morning um in one of the AI sessions said something that really resonated with me. He's like he said AI is like the eager intern, you know, yeah. it, it is like the eager intern. I love and that. so, yeah, it was a great phrase. And I, I love, I love the fact that I could tell an accounting person, it's not going to replace your job. It's going Instead, to help it's going to do some of the work for you and you can have it pause and then you can check it. You can put your seal of approval on it and then, but let, let it happen. And you come into the office and it's like, here's what I've got for you. Just double check it. Like that to me, I think would be like a, so refreshing for a finance person to hear. Um, and I really feel that there is an opportunity for this to work. I mean, our, I feel like some of the accounting in our, in our hospitality environment is pretty simple. You know, we've got AR, we've got AP, we've got, you know, journal entries. Um, so I'm really optimistic that, that we'll find a solution for this. Uh, usually it's the, I think what you spoke about earlier of 
camera is like the mapping issues is where you be intentional i think well i would like to see that ai could help out there like based on the learning expects hey you're mapping towards like a pnl ledge uh, might be a balance sheet accounting can i help you out stuff like that super intentional uh super proactive in order to to remedy the fact that it's not going to hit the books and uh, the accounting staff needs to do a whole bunch of uh, reconciliation processes and it's also the, the question why the data approach because it's more than just accounting yeah it's front office all the ops uh fmb whatever so everything ties back together in one notch that's why i also like where you were like hey you guys are an accounting integration platform we're actually on the verge of repivoting it's uh omnibus is more or less becoming a data unification platform super intentional to fill that specific gap sure. started out obviously with the accounting and the uh individual integrations because you need to be able to have a proper stack but then bring everything together. So that's a great point because it it's not it's not just an issue in the accounting with mapping transactions. We have an issue with bad data mm-hmm. all over. And you know, for people who are familiar with with PMS systems, it's source codes, it's market segments, it's yeah. and and a lot of that is um user entry, right? And it's yep. things that we just can't get a grip on. And so I feel like when you said unification, um, I mean, I I really feel that we collect all this data, but some of it isn't correct. Correct. And so, and and so if we're going to plug in AI to be doing, it's going to be messy. Yes. The, I don't know how can the AI outsmart the bad data entry entry. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. At some point, (laughs) maybe (laughs) something we'll have fun playing with, but I think, and this is what I love about kind of this, this highlighting this is, you know, this data unification platform, you got to think bad data is in there, right? So this is where data flexibility kicks in and actually understanding what data is flexible, what data is needed, and what are the maybe parameters for good data versus bad data. Not that we always know it, but there are ways to source that out through different functionality or different scripts and things like that, which I think is a challenge that we revel in. I know that what keeps him up at night and what gets his brain going is just like, okay, give me a problem. How do we, how do we solve it? And that's where the transition to data unification, data flexibility for us has been a big launching point in and, our stack. And that's where I, uh, for us as a company, uh, partnerships with, with you, for instance, are so beneficial meeting up at a, at a high tech. Because what you've done, what you spoke about is you implemented your own semantics layer. If you datafy it, you, you've got all kinds of uh, the USA, USA ally standards or and what may not, but you've got your semantics layer. So that's the glue. Yeah. And that's when us together as a, as, as a stack, as a vertical, need to embrace and build upon. Yeah. And I don't want people to think that I'm a, a hater on human, you know, human entry is, is our biggest problem. It's, it's I, al- I always advise people to have some kind of change control. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have change control, you have what we previously spoke about people constantly building new values in whatever system it gets out of hand and they don't understand the domino effect of how that hurt is becomes a hurdle yeah. for all of your integrations. And so now all of a sudden you have an unmapped value. Um, you, so I, I just, I highly recommend people, um, formulate some kind of change control. I know a lot of people have permissions and systems that they feel they can just go in and add a value, but there's got to be a conversation about when they're going to do it and somebody else to explain the the domino effect of how that's going to work with all the other systems. Yeah. And I, you know, I think it's important to highlight, you know, none of us are human haters, right? But humans by nature, we are flawed. Like that's yeah. human condition, right? So understanding that humans do cause errors, but also tech can cause errors, right? There's when you have that change control and you have those kind of fallbacks, you can actually start to implement proper process, proper unification and proper semantics to mitigate risk, right? Risk is always going to be there. Yeah. Things are going to happen, but it's all about mitigating with a proper also, plan of attack. Yeah, it's hypothetical, but if you base the learnings and you can actually be like, uh, is this intentional? Are you aware that this change is going to do X, Y, Z? Uh, uh, on those integrations, those, those connectivities, those outputs, that that's something where we, we as an industry, I'm a true believer on that level where we can hugely benefit from ML and AI. Yeah, I, I'm glad you guys are here. Um, I think maybe 
a lot of people may not know who you are no and you've been invisible because you've been like a middleware, right? And, and you learn platform. And you don't. I learned platform. Like okay. middleware wasn't okay. And, you, know? and you don't get enough credit for what you do, but I, I encourage people um, here and after the show um, to contact you with a business problem because I guarantee you there there is a whole handful of business problems that you may have not thought of yet. Correct. But somebody, yeah. and it's not just happening at one place, it's happening at many places. Mm. I have some of my own that I'm going to share with you. And I would love to see if your organization mm-hmm. can be, can be a, a resolution to those pain points. They may not be huge pain points, but it's one less pain point mm-hmm. for the whole flow of everything. And I know we've talked a lot about, you know, our labor force is uh, super struggling, um, but it's all areas that I think it's just, it's one more improvement. Um, that can be made in, in certain departments that I have ideas about, but yeah. Well, I'm going to use this time to kind of share because we haven't spoken outwardly yet, but uh, we're actually launching an ambassador program because when it's, it's people like you that are amb- that ambassadors of this space that understand these different problems, because when we talk to our partners, yes, they see the problems, but they're also thinking from a product level, having folks on our network, having folks out there as ambassadors uh, in the space actually allows us to solve those business cases. And that's actually why we're launching our ambassador program later this year, which we'd love to have you a part of for that reason, because we're actually looking at bringing in people who are bringing these kind of business cases to light so that we can actually figure out a solution, whether that's us solving it or working with partners to do that. But it's something that we feel fully, we believe in is how do we you know, we're also, yes, we were a middleware. We started cutting our kit integrations. We built into a platform. We're data unification, but we want to solve and, and, and lift up the industry. So we're, I'm going to use it now to actually highlight. We're actually launching an ambassador program. If you're interested in being a part of it, please let us know uh, because that's that's actually what we're trying to do. It's why we're here. It's why we've put an investment into the podcast, into connecting with you, especially after the fact that it was a problem. The first person to jump on the call with you was our CEO, not that, anybody else. Right. It, was, it, yeah. was, it was us. We wanted to jump in. Because that is something we feel strongly about. So we, I love that you're bringing that up and highlighting it. And it, I think it's clear in this space. It's and, needed. Uh, what, what I liked is that it touched the core value. Like what you mentioned earlier, it's like solution. It's not about the selling. Uh, right. You sell afterwards. You come up with a solution. And when you approached us like, on, hey, guys, and excuse my friends, you, were, you got a fair warning that when I <laughs> don't... Con- I can't come up with a proper wording. I'm going to be a bit more vocal. It's like, hey, guys, you're fucking shit up. Help yeah. us out here. That's where a partnership kicks in. Again, super intentional, but focused on the solution for the customer. Yeah, on for that day, user. I probably did drop an F-bomb. <laughs> but look where we are now, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, now I can reach out to you if I have to escalate something. Um, your team's wonderful. They've been super responsive. Um you know, I think you've, I think you, you guys have done a good job of making some other vendors out there look good because of, of, we your hope product. we can, and we're contributing quite well. And yeah. like you said, uh, from a connectivity standpoint, the best compliment that we could ever get was like, who are you? Because then the integration itself, yeah. the, the tooling is working remarkably well. Granted, from a marketing perspective and a direct selling uh, perspective, it was like, hey, Omniboost? Hmm, never heard of them. Yeah, I mean, your tool is so user-friendly. Just from the small part I've used it for my clients, I mean, when you compare it to that specific mapping um, process, other vendors might have that in a um, stuffed away in a portion of the administrative portal of their software, right? It's it's not user-friendly. Um, there's a lot of interface configuration around there that we wouldn't want somebody from accounting maybe to be tinkering with. But um, kudos to you. Your portal's super user-friendly, uh, and it, you can set an interface up in under an hour, a point-of-sale mapping interface, yeah. And we are not paying for this, ladies. No, <laughs> this is unsolicited. I'm buying things, though. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, that is yeah. something that we have looked at from every every step is how do we make like what we do is at times complicated not sexy but how do we make it for for the user how do we make it as easy as possible for them to get what they need from step a to b because the hospitality tech space do you know because you're source agnostic right there's so many different platforms out there there's so many different tools there's so many different things that have to connect and, and work together to create a streamlined unified process yeah. and all we want to do is how do we make that easier for people to use and how do we make people enjoy what they do every day and not pull their hair out um, 
Yeah, I'm in looking. The process. I'm looking forward to more conversations. I, you know, I feel like I've only only um, encountered you all in the point of sale space um, and the accounting and the accounting um, export space. But you know, I have a bevy of ideas. Um, I think you guys have a knowledge of point of sale data that is untapped. Um, even this morning, um, we were talking about, you know, data and collecting data. And one of the areas I feel like we still fall short of is collecting, um, point of sale details. So I know that you charged this amount of beverage or food, but I don't know that it was a $150 bottle of Camus vintage 2008 eight or whatever. And I'm not, and I'm, those are details that we need from a marketing standpoint to be able to do what we do with individualized marketing. And I I haven't really found a solution yet that works super well. You're smirking again. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Yeah. There's a lot that we have to talk about. I mean, we're excited because, you know, there's a lot of things that we're trying to do on the back end that we're excited to share and explore. Um, and share with the world at a later time. But these are things, these are the things that we think about all the time. Like when we, when, you, when people think of Omniboost, they don't realize how big picture we think, especially from, from his perspective. And it's, you know, something that goes back to who we are as part of our core DNA being just curious yeah. and, and learning how to uh, be growth mindset. Right. And always thinking about where we can do, because for us, it's, it is such a unique space and hospitality is, it's one of the coolest spaces because there's so much human interaction and, yeah. and, I mean, your most the the memories you think about most are usually traveling or some sort of human experience, right? Like they they are the strongest memories and feelings. And so, even if we can be just a small fraction of that, that to us is like what we strive for. That's I think part of the job that we do is that the hotel you can focus on what they do best, be hospitable, and give people joy. And if we can take away a bit of noise from the background. Yeah, that's best. Well, keep me posted. I uh, am always open for pilots. You know, one of the things I always encourage people to make sure that they um, ask partners for is testing environments. Yeah. You know, way too many times are we um, clicking in new stuff in our production environments. And some vendors out there have um, testing environments available um, in their ecosystem, Some don't. And the ones that don't, I would ask them, encourage them. It's not fair for you to have to kick the tires when you're touching live data. So it's something that's a part of my plan um, that we're always running fake night audits, you know, making sure taxes are calculating correctly. Um, And yeah, so that's one piece of advice. Fuck the system up now and then to see what the error logging is looking like. Yeah. Yep. It's a lot of fun. Cool. I know, we, I know I don't want to like overtake your time, but um, kind of last two questions. So first one is, what are you most excited for as we head into the back half of 24, looking at 25, looking at the industry? What are you, what are some of the things that you are really excited coming out of this year into the next year that, that just like gets you to get out of bed every morning? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, from an integration lens, because that's super important to me is all of the new APIs. Mm-hmm. So not AI, let's put that aside, but APIs and yes. and that old archaic vehicle vehicles we used to um, interface systems. I, so I'm re- a lot of people are coming out with new open APIs, so many agile vendors now um, talking to other vendors and improving their APIs. Um, it could just be one field that needs to be passed and people playing well in the sandbox and seeing that stuff happen. That one field means a tremendous yeah. amount of value for that one vendor. But it also makes your job more important because API to API to API, a lot of people think like, yeah, it's all open API, so it's gonna be working remarkably well. My, our experience usually is like, oh, you need to be able yeah. to have someone avail- available that can help you identify what that specific field actually right. should entail. Yep. Um, and we do um, a lot of testing. Um, I document a lot. I have scripts that, you know, need to pass um, yeah. just to make sure that I feel that it's, we've tried to break it, you know, um, just make sure it's bulletproof before yeah. we put it into production. But um, I'm really pleased over the last year and um, summits I've been to for other vendors 
of what's on the roadmap as it as it relates to APIs and um, this open source integration. Um, it makes things that were taking like five business days to get done, done um, on your own time, yeah. self service. Yeah. Um, so I think that's one of the one of the key things for the, for me this year. Yeah, that's exciting. And then last question is, you know, for those out there watching this, listening to this, how do they get in touch with you? How do they follow you, follow along, or, or if they have questions or want to, you know, tap into some of these ideas out there, how do, how do people find you? Um, you can go to LinkedIn. Um, you can search Jennifer Jones. There's a ton of me. Um, but just put J2 in, um, J2 Hospitality Solutions. My website is www.j2 Hospitality Solutions with an S on the end dot com. Um, uh, you can find me on HFTP. I'm a member. Um, but yeah, I'd love to talk with people, talk through their problems, um, see where we can help them out with innovative solutions. Love that. And I will make sure to link your LinkedIn and your website in the Thanks. show notes. So all you got to do is click the button, show notes, click on it, and you'll be able to, they'll be able to access you really easily so they don't have to do all the searching. I will make sure it's there for them. Wonderful. It's really easy to find you. So Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing. It's good to meet you. Cool. Yeah, we appreciate having you on. We appreciate all the insights. We're excited to discuss more and get you a part of the ambassador program and see you at more events. So I uh, appreciate the time. I know a lot of craziness uh, here at the the Westin as we're in, in Charlotte, making time, finding a little corner of a hallway. But you Funny can't story, see the other side, actually, Rob was remodeling. Yeah, they're remodeling the front entrance. <laughs> they have two different conferences going on all at the same time. So we're able to find a space. I appreciate the flexibility. Thank you for uh, tuning in to another episode of Hospitable. Uh, if there's topics, guests, or you would like to be on the show, please let us know. Also, be a tier one and click that subscribe, follow along. Um, and let us know how we can be a service to y'all. Happy high tech.